Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and the following video is from the Filters 101 course. This is an online course that will help you prepare and analyze your data faster to get the most out of the filter features in Excel. Please visit excelcampus.com filters to learn more about the course. Now let's check out the video. In this video, I'm gonna explain two different ways to filter for a list of items. So here I have a table with a list of transactions and I have this country column here that contains a lot of different countries. So I wanna filter this uh, column down for just a few countries. So we're first gonna look at a technique using the add current selection to filter method uh, to filter down for this list of items. And then we're going to look at a formula-based approach to filter down for a longer list of items in this table here uh, using formulas. So let's jump back over to our table here. So the first thing I wanna do is filter this list here for just these three countries. So I'm gonna select or click the filter drop-down menu here and go to the search box. And I'll start with the first item, which is Costa Rica. So I'm gonna start typing that. And I'll see the list is filtered for that and I'll click OK. So that's just filtered for Costa Rica. So now I wanna add to this filter and I wanna add Poland. So I'm gonna again click the filter drop down menu here, go to the search box and I'm gonna start typing Poland. So I'll start typing Poland. That will again filter down this list and we have this option here that says add current selection to filter. We can click that and we click that and then click OK. That's going to then add that filter criteria to the existing filter criteria. So we can see now that the list is filtered down for both Costa Rica and Poland right here. And so we can do the same thing for Venezuela as well. So we'll click the filter dropdown. We can use the keyboard shortcut, which is the letter E, to jump down to our search box here. We can start typing Venezuela, and we'll see we get the same thing here add current selection to filter. We'll check that box and click OK or hit enter. And now our list has been filtered for all three of those items. Now we can't really see that filter criteria uh, within the filter dropdown menu here anywhere. We'd have to scroll to see all the boxes that have been checked. Uh, but what we can do, if we hit cancel here, is when we hover over the filter dropdown menu icon, we'll see that screen tip appears and it shows there the filter criteria. So Costa Rica, Poland, and Venezuela is the filter criteria that this column has been filtered for. So this technique using the add current selection to filter option is great if we have a small list of items, a short list of items that we wanna filter for. But if we have a long list of items like this table here with 10 items, that could take a long time to type all those searches and click the box and all of that. Uh, that routine, doing that over and over again. So for this type of process, we can use a formula-based approach. So I'm gonna jump back over to my sheet that contains my table. I'm gonna go ahead and just clear this filter for now. And in this uh, cell right here to the right of the table, we're going to add a count if formula. So I'm gonna type equals and then count if. We can tab into the function here. Count if contains two criteria. First is the range that we want to evaluate and then the criteria. So two different arguments here. So we'll first select the range and that will be our filter list. So we're going to go over to this table here, this sheet that contains the uh, filter list. And this is an Excel table. You do not have to use Excel tables for this, but it does uh, have some advantages here, which I'll explain in just a second. So we're first just going to hover our mouse over the top of the header here and left click, and that will select the data body range here of the column that we want to evaluate. That's our range for our count if formula. And then we'll type a comma, and then we'll go back over to our other sheet, and we're going to just select the cell here that contains the country. Now you can see my formula here is using the Excel table notation, which are called structured references. Again, you do not need to use tables. Uh, you could just use regular range references here, and this would work just fine. However, there are some advantages. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close the parentheses, and then I'll hit Enter. Since I'm using an Excel table, the formula is automatically copied down for me. So we now get this column with ones and zeros. And any row that contains a one means that that value is in my filter list. So the count if formula is going to just count the number of times that this value appears in the filter list table, which is right here. So of course, Costa Rica is right here in the filter list table. 
So if we jump back over to our uh, data table here, we'll see Costa Rica right here. So this is returning a one because it's found the value Costa Rica in that table one time. So now what we can do is just filter this column for ones. So I'll just filter here for ones only and click OK. And now we filter down our table for all of the items in our filter list. So if we jump back over to our filter list, again, here is our filter list. And because we're filtering for all of the ones, all of the times that uh, this value has been found in the table, we've applied a filter for all of those values. Now, instead of ones and zeros, we might want to display true and false here. That might make more sense if we're using this uh, as a source data of a pivot table or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and clear our uh, filter again. And here within our formula, where we have this count if formula, we can just set this equal to one. So at the very end of it, I'm gonna type the equal sign and then put a one. And that's going to evaluate whether the return value from the count if function equals one. And if it does, it'll return a true. If not, it'll return a false. And, and so now we can just filter for trues and falses instead of ones and zeros. And that just might make a little more sense. Again, if we're using this as in a pivot table, we can also rename this column to something that's more descriptive, uh, like filter countries or something like that to help us uh, describe what we're doing with this column. Now, as I mentioned before, there is some advantages to using an Excel table for this filter list here. And the main advantage is that we can easily add items to the bottom of this list and not have to worry about updating our formula. So for example here, if I wanted to add maybe a few more countries to the bottom of my list here, I'll add uh, Brazil and Portugal to the bottom. Of course, our table is automatically extended here as we add items to it. And now if we go back over to our uh, data table, all we need to do now is reapply the filters. And that's because this formula is referencing that entire column. This is the entire column in our filter list table. So we don't need to change any references to any cell addresses here to extend the table. That's automatically done for us. So all we really need to do now is just reapply the filter. We can do that on the data tab of the ribbon by just clicking the reapply button right here. That will reapply our filter for all the trues or all the ones. And we can see now that we have these new items that are in our filter list applied here in our data table. So again, you don't have to use Excel tables for this, but it will make your life a little easier and reduce the amount of maintenance that you have to do on these formulas in the future as you add and delete items from the filter list. And one other thing I wanted to point out real quickly is that we can also use this technique to filter for items that are not in this list. So of course, we're currently filtering for items that are in our filter list here. But if we go back to our data table and just change this filter to either false or if you're using ones and zeros, change this to zero and click OK, we're now filtering for all the items that are not in our filter list table here. So everything that's not in that table is displayed here, and this might be useful for a filter criteria as well. So in the next video, we'll take a look at how to filter for duplicates with conditional formatting. So that was a sample video from the Filters 101 course. This is an online course that contains over 40 video lessons just like that one. This will help you prepare and analyze your data faster to help you get the most out of Excel's sort and filter features. If you'd like to learn more about the course, please visit excelcampus.com filters. If you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.